Sylvia. But what about your childhood? Did you live in your imagination a great deal? I certainly didn't have a happy adolescence, and perhaps that's partly uh, why I, I turned specially to writing. As I wrote diaries, stories, and so forth. I was quite introverted during those early years. You are about to hear a program on Sylvia Plath. Last Monday, the American poetess and wife of Ted Hughes died suddenly in London. She was 30. She published her first and highly accomplished book of poems, The Colossus, in 1960. But it was only recently that the peculiar intensity of her genius found its perfect expression. Sylvia Plath arrived in London around the fall of 1962. She was, what, 30 years old? By this time, she had absolutely irrefutable proof that she was a kind of a, a real poet. I, mean, I think a major poet. Um, in that the poems had become unstoppable. She'd kind of hit that mother load. You know, it was like Brent oil or something. She'd gone through and found the reservoir. She was writing poems of an order which seemed to me quite extraordinary for this century. Not just one a month or one every two months, which is what she'd done before. She was writing two or three a day as though she'd tapped the mother load to end all mother loads of her creativity. Fever, 103. Pure, what does it mean? The tongues of hell are dull. Dull as the triple tongues of dull, fat Cerberus who wheezes at the gate. Incapable of licking clean the aguey tendon, the sin, the sin. The tinder cries. The indelible smell of a snuffed candle. Love, love, the low smokes roll from me like Isadora's scarves. I'm in a fright one scarf will catch an anchor in the wheel. Such yellow, sullen smokes make their own element. They will not rise, but trundle round the globe, choking the aged and the meek, the weak hothouse baby in its crib, the ghastly orchid hanging its hanging garden in the air. She used to get up four doors. Rather like John Dunn did the same thing. She was up before, you know, in the first grey light. The most lovely phrase she used, the glassy music of the, of the milkman settling his bottles. And she tried to get in as much as she could before the kids actually stirred. And after that, it was, she was a mum. And then by the time evening came, she was probably too exhausted to do anything else. The complication about that is that she was writing an unbelievable amount and with an unbelievable intensity. In terms simply of creative effort, it seems to me there is nothing in English poetry comparable with it except Keats's great year, you know, when he was also writing against the clock. The stuff was pouring out of her, but it wasn't pouring in some unformed lava-like way. It was highly, highly disciplined and skillful. Can you say, are there any themes which particularly attract you now as a poet? Well, I think my poems come immediately out of the sensuous and emotional experiences I have. But I must say, I cannot uh, sympathize with these cries from the heart that are informed by nothing except, you know, a needle or a knife or whatever it is. I, I believe that one should be able to control, to manipulate these experiences with an informed and intelligent mind. She was taking the everyday material of her life, looking after kids, chopping onions, pushing the pram, taking telephone calls, and turning anything that came to hand into poetry. I had always idolized England because if you're an English major especially, 
You think that here it all began, and you want to walk under Milton's mulberry tree at Cambridge, and you remember all the Dickens that you read when you were little, and suddenly you go to London and you recognize scenes that you have somehow seen before. And this is simply, I think, a sort of literary influence. I remember being appalled when someone criticized me for beginning just like John Donne, but not quite managing to finish like John Donne. And I felt the weight of English literature on me at that point. As far as language goes, I'm an American. I'm afraid I'm an American. My accent's American. My way of talk is an American way of talk. The poets that excite me most are the Americans. In particular, my background is, um, may I say, German and Austrian. On one side, I'm a first-generation American. On one side, I'm a second-generation American. And I was brought up on, on the northern coast of, of Massachusetts, and my whole childhood was spent on the ocean. I remember the, the very spectacular hurricanes we used to have, where my grandmother's cellar would be flooded, and there would be sharks washed up in the garden and so forth. And the image of the sea has been with me ever since, even though I've, I've um, been inland for a few years and I think one always goes back to, to something as vivid and colorful as this sort of experience and I know that the sea comes into um, a great many of my poems sometimes it, it's just a, a subconscious sea a sort of flow of thoughts and so on other times it's the real sea itself we moved from Jamaica Plain to Winthrop in 1937. We had been down there visiting Grandma and Grandpa, who were living at Point Shirley, and the children were so happy on the beach. My husband was failing in health, and that was the real main reason. I wanted to be near my parents. We loved the shore, we loved the house, and I hoped, of course, that he'd recover and that we would live there. And when he was ill, the nurse cut down a uniform and put it on her, and she was her assistant, and she'd bring a cool drink up to her father. She felt very useful. Then, of course, he was sent to the hospital, and he had his leg amputated. The first thing she said, will he have to buy a pair of shoes? And then, of course, when he died, I had to tell the children in the morning that her, her father had died, that he wasn't suffering anymore, that it, and uh, while Warren rejoiced that I was young and healthy and clung to me, Sylvia just slipped underneath the covers of her bed and said, I'll never speak to God again she had been praying every night that her father would be well and would come home. She loved his praise. At that time, she was beginning piano lessons and she would play for him. He would pat her on the head and praise her. Of course, the children had much more freedom in the house after my husband